when the when the prices were very high you know and there's a lot of hoopla about this stuff uh extreme amount you know a couple years maybe even a year and a half ago or so i would kind of get involved in these deals where where people were trying to find like cheap elect where in the electricity ecosystem it was the cheapest place to set up a mining operation and usually that's near um that's near like power stations where the they're right next to it so the electricity is very cheap because they don't have to you know doesn't have to get transported or it would be um like uh like if there was some sort of oil and gas operation where there was natural gas being burned off they would you know there's this thought well if you're going to burn off this natural gas because it's not uh economical to to go sell it I might as well use that as an electricity source to go mine things. And then um, when the, the mark, market kind of adjusted, right, uh, those, those projects disappeared. <laughs> yeah, I remember, I think it was in Kazakhstan a couple of years ago, there was this big hoopla about they were using all the natural resources of the country to mine for crypto. That sounds right. I mean, it's, it's by no means a, a green technology because of the <laughs> yeah. sheer amount of, of power and elect electrical resources that you need to keep these data rooms running for the mining operations. Yeah. So how, how did you get into crypto in the first place? And as far as, uh, helping people <laughs> deal with the IRS and crypto? Sure. Well, we, uh, we have a coworker that is a, uh, an avid inv investor who you generally don't go to lunch with without hearing about how his portfolio is doing. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he started talking to me again, like the terminology is, is so foreign once, when you first start discussing uh, the concepts that that was a big part of just being interested in going to lunch and having some conversations with, with people that were a little bit more learned than me and eventually uh, went from what is cryptocurrency, what is this whole blockchain thing, to what does the IRS think it is, yeah. and what are the rules that are involved. Yeah, and so so you deal with the IRS, obviously, on this issue, or helping people to deal with the IRS. And obviously, crypto's gotten a lot of interest, not just from the general public, but all the different agencies of the federal government as well. You got the, I the Treasury, the IRS, but you have the SEC, the Commodities Board. Everybody wants to have their opinion on how this works. But specifically today, I want to talk to you about how the IRS views cryptocurrency and how it deals with taxation and what the future of it uh, may look like. And not just cryptocurrency today, but potentially a digital dollar down the line. It, I think it kind of paves the paves the way or, or for how they might deal with uh, things down the line. So when I hear cryptocurrency, right, the first thing I think about are the, the names that we've all heard before, right? So, and I'm not going to give them a free shout out here today, but <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. And so when the IRS talks about cryptocurrency, what are they talking about? They're talking about digital currency that it walks and acts like the dollar or, or some kind of governmental currency, but it's not established or backed at all by a governmental authority. And so the thing that keeps cryptocurrencies honest is this blockchain concept where every single transaction is recorded on this open space blockchain for validity purposes. And that's, that's how the accounting essentially um, is kept for, for cryptocurrency. And the IRS has decided that this is not actually currency. They treat it uh, as property. So under the Internal Revenue Code, it's amount realized minus adjusted basis gives you your gain or loss. Uh, there would be certain benefits in the code if it were treated by currency. I mean, obviously, currency versus property, very different things. Currency. Uh, from a from a taxation perspective is is generally not considered property that you might 
have gains or losses on the speculation of a foreign currency or domestic currency, but uh, it's 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 also uh, good for buying stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And a lot of people do that with cryptocurrency as well. They uh, go and purchase things online. I mean, I, I think is it Tesla? You could buy a car in, in cryptocurrency and. Uh, is it overstock.com? I believe has a platform for cryptocurrency purchases. Um, but the IRS has, has come up with its own set of rules as they often do to, uh, to establish how they want it reported for taxation purposes. So like if I had, you know, $20 and over the last year and a half or so, there's been inflation. So that $20 has lost value. I can't, Say you know once I give up that twenty dollars, oh I, it was worth more than it was now, so I have some loss. You didn't have yeah. Versus, right. uh, if I had a cryptocurrency and it was worth twenty dollars a couple of years ago, now it's worth ten dollars. I could technically report that as a loss. You could because it's considered property by the IRS. You could, and I wonder if one of the motivations was not necessarily to um i mean that's a that's a good example in a loss but i it almost seems like the motivation from an irs perspective was you know a lot of these early cryptocurrencies were worth you know one and then suddenly they were worth ten thousand of whatever that you know some of the early cryptos if you go on a purchasing market a ten dollar bill would get you like point zero seven co- pieces of a coin right. <laughs> right, right. because they're they their their value shot up so quickly and it's it's volatile we uh they the the cryptocurrency markets ebb and flow and and since it's largely unregulated as well there can be opportunities for cheating the system uh through just the way that the blockchain works i mean we'll talk about some of the other terminology the hard forks is a, an upgrade in an old cryptocurrency that often creates a new cryptocurrency so there might be an exchange of units there and but at the same time there may not be any meaningful economic difference between those those two tokens or those those two types of coins so um i think the irs perhaps out of a sense of caution decided let's let's make this property or let's let's deem this as property or treat it as property specifically so um those gains could be captured and reported not so much the losses necessarily. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but, <laughs> but but also to provide at least some, not finality, but um, certainty, some yeah. certainty in, in what's going on in this market. So is it, is any, is there a difference between like buying, a, let's say I bought, a thousand dollars worth of Amazon stock, right? And I held on to it for, for more than uh, for, let's say three years, right? So and then I sold it, and it it went up ten percent. So at the time of sale, I would realize income, right? And I have to pay tax on the difference between what I sold it for and what I bought it for, right? What about if I bought uh, a cryptocurrency? And same scenario, is is the tax different? Is is the same? Is it? And then is it this? Is it the same? But is the analysis different? No, I don't believe so. And I okay. think that's why a lot of people argue that cryptocurrency acts more like securities than it does uh, just straight up property. But but that is essentially the the property. The session to wealth analysis is you buy a thing for 10, you sell it for 100, your accession to wealth in that regard is 90. And so that's, that's the untaxed 
gain that needs to be taxed. The 10 was already taxed. Right. Um, so it's the growth that the IRS is trying to capture. But no, I think that's, an, uh, that's a great analogy of how cryptocurrency is taxed as, as a general matter, as, as people that are investing in crypto. Now, there's a lot of other rules that, that may apply in different circumstances. For example, uh, one um, strategy that, that people like to use, and, and one reason people have started turning to this cryptocurrency um, market <clears throat> is because of the decentralized nature of it. So, for example, if you needed a loan to buy a car, the the traditional methodology would be find a lender, a bank, mm -hmm. to to lend you the money. You go buy the car, and um, with cryptocurrency, you can actually get onto these platforms and through a decentralized financing. Uh, strategy you can actually collateralize your crypto and borrow against it from just generally anyone and a lot of people tout that this takes out most of the middlemen right you don't have to pay an attorney to to draft the the lien on the car you don't have to pay the lending fees that the bank charges you literally just go online Borrow, borrow the money from this decentralized financing uh, platform, and that's your car. Yeah. So I I asked earlier about other agencies um, wanting to define what crypto is and comparing it to the IRS. So uh, with you know, if you hear the SEC folks talk about you know they want to kind of bifurcate between some of the coins and the rest of the coins and as to what is a security, what it's not. As far as the IRS is concerned, it's one big bucket. Every one of these things that you just identified as, you know, used like currency and not backed by a government. Yeah, it's generally one big bucket. Um, there are other uh, similarly situated buckets. I uh, don't think we've mentioned non-fungible tokens before. I think most people think those were kind of a flash in the pan, but uh, that's at least kind of just anecdotally what i've heard from some other podcasts that i've listened to in the mm -hmm. past right so so nfts are not considered crypto as far as the irs is concerned well it's it's not currency that that it that it is treated similarly so if you purchase an nft online and for 10 and sell it for 100 you have 90 gain then it wants you to tax it as property just like you would with cryptocurrency with cryptocurrency i mean that that strategy that that process isn't that different for nfts i think the delineation there really is that an nft versus cryptocurrency doesn't have that currency aspect to it like it's a lot more believable to me to think of an nft as quote unquote property because it doesn't have the 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 currency um, aspects because it's not fungible, right? Non fungible, right? Versus right. money's fungible. It's in the name. <laughs> it's in the name, right? Yeah, so, good point. so, so it's it's fungible versus non fungible. Okay, and so when so the IRS is looking at this thing, and I know right now if I go to fill out a ten forty individual tax return, the only question referring to crypto is have you sold or basically they want to know if you've made a gain. They're not asking if you've bought or you currently hold crypto. Now, is there some regulation that I was reading about where now they want brokers to start letting the IRS know that, oh, yes, first Joe Public here just purchased uh, cryptocurrency? Right. Earlier this year, the, the IRS issued, or excuse me, the, to, the Department of Treasury issued proposed regulations that... Um, mean to impose a, a reporting a 1099 reporting process on people that are identified or entities that are identified as brokers of cryptocurrency 
<clears throat> uh, so you can think of this as your form 1099 R that you might get from your, your Schwab 401k or your, your IRA, um, on an annual basis. And that is sent not only to you, but a copy of it is sent to the IRS. And when you send in your form 1040 tax return, the automated system in the, in the background is looking for mismatches. That's, that's one of the first checks in the IRS system is, did we get a 1099 from a third party that they should have gotten to? And is it reported on the 1040? And if there's a mismatch there, there's, there's a lot of these mismatch. I mean, there's no secret to it. There's a lot of these, these mismatch, uh, tests that are run. I mean, with your, uh, W-2s, for example, same, same thing happens that they get the list from social security and they, uh, match it to everybody's 1040 that, that comes in electronically. Um, so they, they proposed regs earlier this year and they opened, opened the floor to the public for comments on these regs. They're still compiling the 13,000 comments that they got from the cryptocurrency c- uh, community <laughs> Uh, to to determine what what if any changes to the proposed regs may need to be made to ensure that when the regs are final finalized they're at least you know equitable to, they're, that that they're fair that's generally what what the process is if the public has an opportunity to notice and comment the IRS has to come back and say we have we acknowledge these substantive comments and this one is good. So we're going to change the final regulations right. in this regard. This one we disagreed with and why. And so, and that, that relates to this part of the final regulations. I know I'm getting too deep into the, the notice and comment process here, but essentially they want cryptocurrency brokers to have the same reporting requirement as any other financial institution that is selling a security or um, establishing a brokerage account on behalf of somebody who is investing in cryptocurrency. Yeah, so I mean, bottom line, at, at the end of the day, the IRS wants to collect more information because this is becoming more prevalent and slowly it's but surely. It's a recurring surely. theme. If, if the IRS is asking for more of anything, it's going to be information. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, this, and this, from my experience, this is, I don't, you know, I think there's probably a lot of people in the crypto community that see this as a, as a bug or a problem or something they wouldn't want. Um, from a, from a retail standpoint, you know, the ability to have um, a brokerage account where they give me a 1099R that's kind of organized from a tax bank perspective m- makes things easier. Nine, um, from my understanding, it's on me to make sure it's right. And that's a whole, that's a whole other challenge, but I know from, from crypto that I've purchased, um, I, and this is the lawyer in me, like, I don't like selling it. And the reason I like selling it is because I know I have an obligation to go settle up with the IRS at the, you know, uh, before April of next year. And it's like, am I going to even remember that I, (laughs) that I sold this, you know, and, um, how am I going to make, sh- how am I going to go back and keep track of all this stuff? And, um, so in some ways it, I can see that there's from a retail standpoint, uh, there's some providers that might see this as, as a, a natural maturity of, of investing in, in crypto is to be able to sit, make, make the tax paying part of it easier on the taxpayer. But the ability that like, I totally agree with you, Stuart, you know, the, um, it, it's going to make this additional information is going to make the IRS's job a lot easier to, to police the, their position of, of it being property and tax that way. Yeah. I was going to say, so I, I, I completely understand what you're talking about when somebody goes to purchase it, but what about folks who've been mining this? If they, they've been receiving coins, they're not getting it from a quote unquote, you know, a brokerage house. They're getting it directly from what? Do you, what did you call it? 
They, well, one one way that miners are rewarded or incentivized for mining, uh, <clears throat> and just to give you the five second version, mining is uh, the method of resolving and validating the transactions that occur and are then recorded on the blockchain, and so people are incentivized to participate in mining by um, if. If you're the if you're the miner that that validates the next line, you get um, some cryptocurrency in exchange for your efforts. Okay, so so let's say you did that, uh, but you didn't buy it from a broker. There's no record of it outside of the blockchain. Said they issued a token. I'm assuming, but nobody knows it went to Jane Public here, and so now they go out there and, and, and do some kind of a transaction where they, you know, transfer it for other goods and services received. There's no, there's no track record of that, right? Well, the blockchain itself is a track record. But the IRS doesn't know who it went to. At this point, we are um, aware that the IRS has their ways of, I mean, anybody can look at a blockchain and see what transactions occurred. So it's it's not hidden information, and uh, parties to a transaction are part of what's recorded on the blockchain, and that information absolutely could be tracked. Now, it's not as easy as forcing a a broker to provide a 1099 on right. everyone that holds an account. Obviously, that takes more work, but you bring up a good point that miners, when they're, when they have the succession to income when they receive this income for services, what they're doing there is working a job. Right. And so from a taxation perspective, they are supposed to report that as income or services rendered. So, so that's my question. Okay. That's where I'm going to. So <coughs> there are people out there that have these computers set up in their garages and they're mining and they are receiving Crypto. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that, should they report that as taxable income? What's the basis if the later on they go and they sell this at a 10 multiple or 20 multiple or whatever? How does that work from an IRS perspective? Well, it is, it's taxable income for services rendered and their, their basis for future transactions would be the, the value of the coin or the token that they that on the day that it was received. So let me so let, let, let me walk through an example. Sure. Uh, the mining process is complete and I've received one token worth $20,000. So have I realized $20,000 of income or have I realized 20,000 of revenue? Because there's also cost to running my machines. Well, that's a good point. Uh, you would have uh, costs of goods sold or costs of services rendered there that, that should be deductible as expenses. So I would call it revenue, especially if you happen to be somebody that is tracking those costs as a viable business and, and can properly deduct them. Okay. And so if I've recognized that as, as revenue and then I've deducted it and let's say my net income mm -hmm. that I've, I could justify, I've, I've tracked it is 20,000 minus my cost. And now my income is $5,000. Okay. Equivalent of five thousand. So I report that as five thousand dollars of wages, or income. Well, it could be wages, wages if, if depending on how the mining operation is structured, it could be services rendered as an independent contractor. Okay. Let's assume perhaps. independent contractor. So I got okay. five thousand dollars of income. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I report that as taxable income. Now, is my basis for future valuation five thousand? These are all very good questions, and 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 certainly there are arguments to be made. Um. I guess here's my here's here's where I'm going with this, Stuart. Is, I think it would be has the IRS. It seems like that. Does the IRS have clearly defined rules on this at this point, or is this still all open to interpretation? There's a lot that's still open to interpretation, but the IRS has tried its best. I think generally they've done a pretty good job through some letter rulings and 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 revenue rulings and notices that they've they've issued. I, there, there have been several scenarios that, that have been uh, 
addressed. And really what they've tried to do is make analogous decisions based on what might have happened with, you know, 10 years ago with uh, uh, somebody that's receiving property as either wages or independent contract. But yeah, absolutely. I, I would say if you're getting a, a token that's worth $20,000 and you're deducting 10000 or $15,000 in expenses, you're paying tax on the $5,000. I would say that's your basis going forward. And I think, I don't think that's a, I think that can be worked out, not necessarily talking about the cryptocurrency world, but you know, with the caveat that we're, we're treating it as property at this point. Right. I think that could be worked out through general property principles. Well, from, so here's where it gets interesting, right? So if you're a miner and you've recognized $20,000 of revenue, you probably want the higher basis, absolutely, <laughs> not the lower basis. And at the same time, you're saying to yourself, well, how is the IRS going to know that I received this crypto? They have their way. They have their ways. Well, that's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I always uh, warn my clients that if, if the motivation is to play the audit lottery, um, you know, I, that's nothing I can really comment right. on. I can, I can just tell you, you know, how it's maybe supposed to work. And if there's, you know, some inconsistencies or if there's some gray area that, that they'd like to challenge. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I I'm guess always, I'm always into that too. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I, I guess, you know, it's very clear to me why the IRS is wanting to get involved and they should get involved because, you know, you don't want one set of rules for everybody who's following the, the law mm -hmm. And another, in a second set of rules for everybody else, you know, to skirt the law. It's just not right. So um, I guess the the question that I have is, as these regulations, you know, they're 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 pending. It's talking about retail buying from brokers, mm -hmm. but for those that are doing the mining, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jack, you know more about this than I do. It's not just some guy in his basement mining. There are entire companies that are set up specifically for mining purposes. I mean, how are they dealing with those folks no i mean that's a great point you're right i mean they're sophisticated operations and um just like any any business you know that they're, they're getting advice from from lawyers like us to say you know here's here's the conservative approach you know this is what the irs is saying about these things here's what the proposed regulations say um and you need to be prepared to for these regulations potentially go final not even all proposed regulations go final mm -hmm. and we'll still recommend our clients follow them because that we believe that's what the irs is gonna um say that the loss the statute that the regulations are built around support and the positions that they're going to yeah. take proposed regulations at a minimum are um an indication of a policy that's been adopted somewhere. right <laughs> For right or wrong, for good, <laughs> for good yeah. or evil. <laughs> but, I mean, you wouldn't say that the IRS would say, no, we're not following our proposed regulations on this. I guess they could because they're not final. But, but, but generally speaking, I, right. you know, it's hard to see that the IRS would say, okay, that, yeah, we're, we're going to ignore what we, we wanted the law to be and go with something yeah, else. They, they are <laughs> at least instructive. At right. All right. So, yeah. so let me, let me ask this question then. So the IRS is saying, we're treating crypto as property. We talked earlier about the SEC wanting to define potentially as securities. Uh, and so here's an area that I think uh, comes up that kind of touches both sides is what about wash sale rules? And when, you know, with, uh, with equities, for example, we it's clearly defined we have wash sale rules. We know what those are. How does it work with the crypto current? If the IRS is saying it's a property, do wash sales rules they, apply? They Arguably, they should not apply. Um, other professionals may disagree with me on this particular question, though. I, I have heard arguments that the wash sale rules could apply, or at least in the absence of further guidance, they may apply. <laughs> but I, I would disagree because wash, wash sale rules, I believe, are pretty specifically defined as securities-related. And since this is in this gray area of 
crypto property or <laughs> yeah and, and, um, and this is and this is where it, it's kind of confusing right on one hand we're saying well the irs says this is property on the other hand as we're talking we're throwing the, the term generally investing in crypto right, right? right well well which one is it is it are we investing or are we not investing right is it currency i mean do you do you invest in the u.s dollar when you you get wages or when you ex, you know are you investing when you're buying foreign currency do, do you understand the difference that i'm trying to Certainly. paint here and so for somebody listening uh to the show they're saying look all right i i've mined some crypto and it seems like the rules here are kind of this very gray area um and there's some proposed regulation um and so they're going to follow the guidance whether it's their cpa or it's their online uh tax professional but as they're thinking or you know as as they're they keep mining and they keep buying this at some point they're going to start thinking about okay income tax planning down the line not just today so when when you kind of put on your planning hat and you think about um crypto in the sense of income planning more efficient income planning what are some things that somebody who's who keeps buying these assets needs to think about down the line as a, with regards to tax efficiency well that's a good question uh, there there probably aren't a lot of strategies that i would say would be germane to cryptocurrency necessarily i mean if you consider it as property i mean let's let's think of the miner for example he he likely has all the same options for tax planning that any other business owner might have, uh, be that uh, as far as um, structuring its, its entity in a tax efficient way. Maybe he's got partners, so he might want to pass through. Um, haven't looked deeply into it, but just kind of a wild hair that I'm thinking of right now. Would it be a good idea for that business to be structured as a C corporation, possibly to take advantage of something like the gain exclusion in section 1202 of the code that seems to be getting, well, I mean, it is, it's getting a lot more press than it did back in um, the nineties when it was first established when that first, when it first passed Congress, but because it's, you know, the, the 21% C corporation tax makes it more attractive at this point, uh, especially if you can get hundred percent gain exclusion on the right. back end of that five years down the road after you've built a company. So I would say it, it matters. It matters what hat you're, you're wearing. Yeah. Like I guess you could but, maybe depreciate the mining equipment or at least the, you know, where, where you're certainly. the structure you're housing it in. Um, uh, you know the the ex, the the expenses that go into operating the type of business, the electrical bill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I see what you're saying. There's um, there's up and at least from a mining operations standpoint, you could you'd approach it just like you'd run a business. And where where are the advantage? What what advantages or incentives does the tax code give a business owner to to operate its business? So it seems like to me, for you know, if we could kind of <coughs> bifurcate this into the retail and the miners. Mm -hmm. For the retail folks, it's pretty straightforward, right? As as this becomes more prevalent, more guidance is going to be issued. Bro, you know, retail's usually buying from their initial funding comes from buying it from brokers. They're going to have some reporting, so it's going to be pretty straightforward. But for the miners, there seems to be a lot more. I don't want to say gray areas, but more questions that haven't yet been answered as far as the. Um, the, you know, guidances from the IRS and some uh, case law, right? I mean, some some things are answerable just in the in the position. I mean, the miners are indeed running a business. Some some things are answerable answerable there. I mean, you you know what your gross income is. You know what your expenses were. Um, to at least some reasonable degree it does kind of depend. Are you a casual miner or are you <laughs> actually like, is, is this is like a sophisticated um, business, yeah. a sophisticated business or not? But, um, I, I don't think that there's, 
I don't think it's like the wild west. I think there are things that we can analogize. Uh, the IRS has stated that if, if, if you have this accession to wealth from your services rendered from the mining operations, if you're an independent contractor, you may be subject to self-employment tax. If you're, if you're a W two wage earner, if that's the hat you have on while you're doing the mining and you, you get, get the cryptocurrency as wages, you may be subject to withholding requirements or the business may be. And, um, but again, it's, you know, adopting the proper, like the property rules are fairly well established. If you have ascension to wealth, yes, the devil's in the details. Like there are, there are probably gray areas that, that people are trying to find and, and maybe, maybe available in the, crypto world and but that's it's just like anything else new it's you know who who knew 15 years ago or 20 years ago or 10 to 15 years ago that this wasn't anything more than a you know vanity plate or something yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. no and, i remember it was and now it's a... it's it's established itself as a, a, a robust system of uh trading investment and so the rules are always going to kind of come up behind yeah. like the technology is is always going to be a little bit ahead of the regulation <laughs> yeah uh, you know the, the most interesting thing that's come out of for me at least a different way of looking at this is the, the point you brought up jack and that is all else being equal if my dollar is worth a dollar and this crypto is worth a dollar two years from now um or let's say the crypto goes down in value, I could actually write that off, whereas the dollar I can't write off. So right. it could potentially act as a natural hedge against inflation. It's absolutely possible that you're, um, because if you're, if you're treating it as property, you, you get, you get to net your profits and losses, especially in a capital context. And, um yeah somebody that's got 20 of crypto down that that turns into 10 just through the the mere fact of inflation potentially can uh take advantage of the loss rules in that regard whereas right. somebody that's got 20 bucks in their mattress still has 20 bucks in their mattress right yeah no what was exciting about some of this technology from a a global s standpoint was more i felt like in the third world countries or countries where there was corruption or countries where there was unstable currencies because like uh, you know um when when venezuela or some some of these countries that went through these big uh currency inflations or upheavals all of a sudden you would see people move away from the local currency and start using cryptocurrency because that was a more more reliable way of doing business you know and and so that was very exciting from like a, a global standpoint to try to give um some of these people who are suffering in these difficult situations some way of having a state some stability in the economy you saw it in situations where people maybe in the united states were sending money home well they would you know they didn't want to send U.S. dollars, maybe it's not accepted there. I have to go through an exchange. If if a cryptocurrency, they could go to, there's this one business they could go to like a crypto ATM and then like send it, send it to their um, their brother or sister in in their the third world country, and all of a sudden that was a better way to send money home. So there was all these, and you know the governments couldn't be involved in that because it was just on this ledger that would move. So there was a, you know, I think uh, in that community, there's a lot of excitement to see where this is, is gone, what this was going. Um, but let, you know, luckily in the United States, right. We don't, we don't suffer those, those same issues. Haven't for a while. And have, yeah. And hopefully <laughs> we don't. Right. But um, uh, to that end, uh, I might have the wrong country in mind, but I believe El Salvador is has has started endorsing certain cryptocurrencies as uh, 
legitimate currencies of the country of El Salvador. Wasn't it the president of Ecuador was talking about going off just using cryptocurrency as the just making the move? Yeah. Getting out of the business of (laughs) selling money. (laughs) I mean, it's certainly a viable, I mean, it's, it's, certainly has this futuristic feel to it that I don't think it's going to go anywhere in the next 20, 40, 50, yeah. 100 years. It's only, it's only, it's only going to grow in its prevalence, I think. And so it, it's worth establishing some, some regulations, some rules of the road, I think. Uh, but you're right. It's, uh, it's the, the decentralized, um, nature of it, I think, would does lend itself to a more global economy in that regard. That people people are excited about that, continue to be excited about those opportunities and those prospects. Yeah. Anything else you want to add on the what we need to know about crypto taxation? Well, like I said, I'm I'm still learning as I go, and I think that's really I think everybody that's in the space just has to be prepared for some curveballs here and there. Just like like I said, it, we're we're gonna it's, there's gonna be some growing pains coming in the in the near future as um, it becomes a more and more regulated space. But I I don't think that that'll lend itself undesirably in the long term so if you're if you're somebody who's been in the crypto space a while has been has been trading cryptocurrency but really hasn't been paying attention to to much of the the tax rules what what's your advice to them um you know if they came knocking to you i know this is a big hypothetical well sure i, I mean first of all yeah i, I are they a casual investor or are they a professional investor? It, it depends what their relationship is with the cryptocurrency, just like I've alluded to mm-hmm. earlier. But I, I think the best thing you can do as with any, any complex tax issue is um, seek out competent help where, you, you know, you don't, if you don't know, ask somebody and, and try and try and work it out because, um, the the risks are real with the IRS. They're not. They're yeah. they're they they play hard. <laughs> yeah, Information contained in this podcast and accompanying video have been derived from sources believed to be reliable. This content is not guaranteed as to its accuracy. It does not purport to be a complete analysis of the topics discussed. Analysis is based on assumptions that may not come to pass. None of the content should be construed as legal or investment advice. You should consult with a qualified professional before implementing any strategies discussed. All expressions of opinion reflect the judgment of the speakers on the date the video was recorded and are subject to change.